Because right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Powered by FanDuel Sportsbook. Good evening, everyone, and welcome inside the Fan Cave. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We do it every night at 1035. Want to hear from you at 412-575-2600. Bob Pompiani, Andrew Filipponi, Andrew Benatendi. We can mention all these names tonight because Benatendi hit a grand slam off Will Crow, which I couldn't understand why he was in that late into the game, given what he had done. However, we'll not start there. Instead, Andrew, I want to start about Ben Roethlisberger. Very interesting 16 minutes today where he uh, addressed a lot of different things. And uh, he was very upbeat, looking forward to a big year. Talked about his arm being stronger. Talked about his offense. He didn't necessarily talk so much about the run game as much as I maybe would have liked because I think it's going to be an important component of it. What was your takeaway from Big Ben today? First of all, Bob, you know, it's been a while since I've been in the man cave. You got a nice blow up mattress for yourself in there yet for these long hours <laughs> when you get these late Stanley Cup playoff face offs and uh, NBA yeah. playoff games like Lakers Suns. You yeah. got a nice little maybe mattress or a couch. It's for right over here to the right under the icy lights. Okay. Yes. So we have a, oh, we have a tap set. and everything. It's all taken care of, man. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, you're all set then. Um, you know, you're asking me for my biggest takeaway. I think the headline or the or the quote that got the most attention was when Ben said it was my idea to take a pay cut, which... You don't believe him? I don't know. Well, the owner and the general manager said that we couldn't have him back with that salary cap hit and that it dragged on for months or weeks. Maybe months is an exaggeration, so... I didn't really get that if it was as simple as Ben saying, I'll take less money. Why did it drag on the way that it did uh, in the early part of the offseason? I didn't get that part of it. I don't know many people that willingly go to their employer and say, give me less. Now, I think Roethlisberger made it pretty obvious, Bob, that when he said that, he didn't think it was because his play was down in 2020. He did it because he thinks it's good for the team. He's making a kind of sacrifice in the name of the Steelers putting a better product out there. So we'll see what strings are attached with that. I didn't think a pay cut this offseason was a charitable act by Ben. I thought it was required, frankly, for him to stay with the team. If he doesn't take that pay cut, Bob, what do you think happens? Do you think he plays on his on his $40 million cap hit? No, no. I, I don't I think, think that so. Was, I think that you're right. That was apparent, uh, and it had to happen. But the thing was he was willing to do it because, you know, quite frankly, I remember talking to him um, – not too long after the season where he said, you know, I made enough money. I want to win championships. And I still believe that's his modus operandi. That's what he wants to do. And I think he believes that he can be a big part of it yet. So, and I also don't think he liked ending the way that season ended. And it could have been that his arm was just shot at that point. He talked about being worn out. He didn't elaborate. I would have liked to have, you know, heard a little follow-up on that one just to exactly what he was worn out from. I tend to think it was his arm and I think his arm, uh, will respond better this season, especially if they don't throw it as much. And I got to believe they're not going to throw it as much. Well, what makes you believe that Najee Harris being the first round pick? Yeah, I think they're going to try to okay. divvy it up. And I think in his case, less is more when it comes to throwing the football. He can still be good at it, but that doesn't mean you have to do it all the time. And quite frankly, he knows you can't have these defenses digging in knowing that they're going to get little short pa uh, passes all the time. Yeah. I don't disagree with you, Bob. I just wonder if it's as simple as what you're saying, and I agree with you, that they can't be so predictable and so unbalanced. Why didn't they make an adjustment last year? Yeah. I mean, we're talking about we, – we, you think Mike Tomlin's one of the best coaches in the NFL. I don't think he's too shabby. Kevin Colbert's a heck of a GM. It's such a well-run organization. Why was he throwing it almost 60 times a game when the weather got bad, when he already had tons of mileage on his arm? Uh, it, well, the only answer the is because they ignored their uh, run game or chose not to use their run game. And, but that was the, the thing with me. I thought their run game was okay for the first six weeks of the season. And all of a sudden, it was either ignored or not good enough. Whatever the well, reason, it led to that. And then the other thing that I'm a little bit perplexed by is Ben said today, you know, that this is it's like I'm learning a whole new language at this point in my career with this offensive coordinator change. Matt Canada was here last year. You know, this isn't like Todd Haley coming in from the outside with a whole new set of ideas, with a brand new playbook. I don't understand how Canada last year can't take some of the concepts from the offense that he was in and make it easier on the quarterback. 
Did that make any sense to you? Why does Canada's well, playbook have to be so, like, the, the, the language and the verbiage has to be totally different on a 39-year-old quarterback? That makes no sense. Why would you force him to do that? When you were here, you already know what some of those play calls were. And, if they unless, work, keep them in. Unless they've changed it completely, and it was uh, Randy Fickner's offense, and he came in, added to it. This is his first opportunity as an offensive coordinator, and I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But they we were doing we Matt Canada stuff, time. weren't I bet they? You, I bet you there's I mean, a... it wasn't just Feekner's playbook. They were doing Matt Canada jet sweeps and right. motions and stuff. Well, you could add early things. In the year. But when he takes over completely, there could be a lot. Of, and I don't know. I mean, we're going to find out in time goes on, and we'll see what happens. But I, I hope that they utilize their run game uh, because I think their run game can be a very important component to this. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, offseason leading into the mini camp, leading into the uh, training camp, and then you'll see some preseason games. And when I come back, I'll ask Andrew about Dwayne Haskins because Ben Roethlisberger had some pretty amazing praise for him. We'll do that. We'll take your calls at 412-575-2600, and we'll talk Andrew Benatendi as well as the Pirates trail by three. It looked like not only was Derek Shelton going to get ejected, but almost... Uh, another ejection after that in a play that I haven't really seen too often. Uh, we'll talk about that and more right here on the Nightly Sports Call, Pittsburgh CW.